Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Welcome back to today's video. In part one of our series on light, we talked about infrared light, which is that band of light that is invisible to the naked eye. It's just below red. We can't see it, but it has profound effects on heating up our bodies, stimulating collagen production, reducing inflammation, helping our mitochondria. If you missed that video, it's gonna be linked in the description. Today, we're gonna to be talking about three types of visible light that are very helpful and beneficial for the body. We're gonna talk about straight up red light, like the red that's reflected off a red apple or red that comes from those light panels. We're also gonna be talking about blue light, which is a very high energy light. It's a shorter wavelength than red light. And we're gonna talk about green light as well, which is right in the middle. All of them have different biological effects and I want you to know about these because knowledge is power when it comes to your health. If you understand what the different wavelengths of these lights do for your body, you can time them throughout the day and get a lot of great health benefits. Let's dive into today's video. Fitfatherproject.com All right, so let's start talking about red light. This is a little LED panel that's kicking out red light. And again, here's a picture of the visible light spectrum. Red light is the longest wavelength of light that we can see, meaning it's a longer, loopier waves than the very short, high energy blue waves. And this is powerful light. And what red light can do is actually is really good for reducing inflammation on the skin. If you wanna improve anti-aging, cosmetic stuff, boost your collagen, reduce wrinkles, decrease inflammation on the surface of your body, red light is a huge friend for you. Also, it's good for helping your mitochondrial health. We all know that all of our cells create ATP through these mitochondria, and red light is very beneficial for that. Now, I think of red light as like slightly less powerful than the infrared spectrums, but they have very similar benefits. But one unique thing about red light that is really important, especially as we age, is it's actually very helpful for our eyes. And I actually wanna read this study to you. There was a 2021 study published in Scientific Reports where researchers took a group of 24 subjects who all had some kind of age-related eye decline, macular degeneration, loss in vision changes, and they exposed the subjects to red LED lights for three minutes. Then they measured changes in their eyes. And what they found from just three minutes exposure of gazing at red light, the subjects had a 17% improvement in vision, and they had dramatically increased function in their mitochondria in those key eye cells. So point being, red light is a very powerful ally that you can use for helping keep your eyes good as you age, which is something that many of us will face. And when you pair that red light with some infrared light, you get even deeper benefits as well. And if you wanna learn about infrared, we have that last video. So let's move on and talk about some blue light. So if we look at the electromagnetic spectrum again, and we're gonna pull it up here on the screen, red light is the longest wavelength. Blue light is close to among the shorter of the shortest wavelengths, which means it has more energy. And now many of us have heard of blue light as something that's bad because we hear from like our screens and all of our technology is kicking off a lot of this blue light, but that would be a vast oversimplification. See the sunlight itself kicks off a lot of blue light. It's one of the reasons why the sky looks blue during the day because the different air molecules in the sky actually really disperse this blue light that's emitted from the sun. What blue light is very powerful for is actually activating us and getting us more alert. In fact, it's a great light to be exposed to in the middle of the day. And studies have shown that blue light increases attention, increases reaction speed, can increase memory, can increase alertness. All this is great stuff during the day, it's just not what you wanna be exposing yourself to when you're trying to wind down and sleep at night. So blue light is good in the right context. And of course, the best blue light is getting it through natural exposure by getting outside, getting some of that natural blue light from the sun in the middle of the day. Of course, you're getting naturally some of this blue light from the screens, but I would say, at least as it comes to your health, is cut down the blue light at night because you wanna be in this proper circadian pattern where you're activated when the sun is up and you're relaxing when the sun gets back down. This is what's most natural for our bodies. And as it relates to our eye health, blue light itself can actually be damaging to the eyes if we get too much of this. So red light is healing, blue light can be damaging. And that's why a lot of us are having eye problems from staring at the screens all the time. And a couple simple solutions. You can use screen filters that cut down some of the blue light. Most of the new smartphones have different settings you can do under light and brightness that can cut out some of that blue light. You can also get some blue blocking glasses and stuff like that that you wear at night to reduce your eye strain in your blue light. Point being, blue light's good during the day, but not at night. Let's move on to green light. Green is a very powerful color that we see all over the place in nature. I and mean, when we look around in the forests and the grass, it's kicking off this green light. And by naturally, it has a very soothing quality to us. We know a lot of us feel good when we're in green rooms and we're outside in a park, we're getting exposure from this green light. But there's actually some real research-backed benefits to how green light can help us reduce pain in particular. And we're gonna go to a researcher named Mohab Ibrahim, 
MD, PhD, and he has a really interesting story. He has a brother who suffers tremendously from migraines. And what his brother found is when he was in their little home garden, his migraines were lessened. And Ibrahim was asking himself, why is this happening? Is it just being outside or is there something more to the light? So what he did is he took a, a group of people who suffered from migraines regularly and he exposed them first to white light as a control for two hours. So he basically had LEDs that were kicking off white light and then he exposed the migraine subjects to green light for two hours and he basically measured all their different parameters. On a scale of zero to 10, zero indicating no pain and 10 indicating the highest level of pain, migraine volunteers had an initial average pain score of eight after completing the green light therapy, their score dropped to an average of 2.8, and the frequency of headaches dropped from 19 to 6.5 per month, and the overall quality of life score climbed from 48% to 78%. And this is literally just by being exposed to LEDs that's kicking off green light. And this research has actually been validated by further studies showing that green light in particular is powerful for migraine headaches. It's also powerful for reducing pain in the body, among its many other benefits. My point being is like many of us, when we have pain, we are turning to like pharmacological solutions. Like let's pop an Advil, let's take some kind of pill so we can modify the biochemistry. And what I'm trying to tell you is you have other options. You can literally use the feedback of light on your body to create biochemical changes in a much more upstream pathway that doesn't have nearly as many side effects. No one's getting damaged from green light LEDs in this way. They're just receiving some pain reduction benefits. So I wanna bring this to your attention. And again, also, I think it's just really another good idea to get outside because all these green things we see in nature, they're reflecting green light to us. That's what our eyes are perceiving. So there's many things and there's actually research. A lot of it comes out of Japan. They talk about the benefits of forest bathing, which basically means going out into deep nature and just feeling and just soaking up the good vibes, you could say. And it's probably a mix of just being around fresh air kicked out from the trees, being around some green light, just being outside, which kind of lowers our blood pressure, gets us parasympathetic. The more of that stuff you can do, the more your health's gonna benefit in the long run. So in conclusion, my suggestion is that you really get your life set up so you're naturally in the cycles of circadian rhythm as it relates to light. Again, in the morning when the sun is rising, it often looks red. It's kicking off a lot of these natural red lights. If you can get outside and see some of that stuff, it's very beneficial. And I wanna emphasize the UV radiation from the sun that a lot of us are worried about. And we're slathering sunscreen on our skins to like prevent. That is really not present very much in the morning and the night. So you can get outside safely, get red light in the morning. And you also get a ton of other benefits. In the middle of the day, I would suggest if possible that you get outside for five, 10 minutes get some of that blue light exposure. And also in the middle of the day, there is some of that UVB light that's kicked off from the sun that helps your skin synthesize vitamin D. Now too much can be damaging for sure, but a little bit of exposure can be good. And certainly during the middle of the day, don't be afraid to get blue light from your screens, but in the nighttime, when there's not as much blue light, there's no blue light in the sky anymore, the sun is down, is not the time that you should have blue light blasting your body. Of course, anytime you wanna heal, anytime you have pain, you can just get some simple green LED electrodes and you can start play, blasting it on your skin, around your head, on any area of your body that's hurt, and you will see some benefits. So this is another tool in your toolbox. I hope you're finding this very interesting. And this is part two of part three. If you missed part one, we talked about infrared, which is very important. And in part three, we're gonna get even deeper to talking about UV radiation, skin cancer, sunlight, and what I suggest you do on that front. I hope you really enjoyed this, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. If you like this, hit the thumbs up button because it helps spread this across the algorithm. It really means a lot to us to get your validation that this was helpful for you because we spent a lot of time creating these videos. And of course, hit the subscribe button because you get access to over 500 different videos across our Fit Father and Fit Mother Project YouTube channels. We have all this great stuff on like light, but also about straight up nutrition, workouts to follow, mindset stuff, motivation. We have it all here on our channels because we're here to help busy dads and busy moms get and stay healthy for themselves and their families. Thanks for being here, my friend. Check out part three very soon of the series, and I'll talk to you very soon.